blessing for us. And by the grace of God, our dad in the Lord is here. And he's here to bless us, to be a blessing to us. So without wasting much time, I have the simpler honor to introduce to us our Father in the Lord that will be ministering to us today. As I said earlier, God has been using him. And has been a blessing. Despite the short notice, he was still willing to be a blessing to us. And we thank God for his life. Thank God for his ministry. And we pray that the Lord will continue to hold him in Jesus' name. So we rise up as welcome my Father in the Lord, the Pastor Dr. Akin and Denny from Minnesota. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, brethren in Missouri. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. You are having a very wonderful program. There is no way I can be absent from this one. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because when we talk about dominion, that's who we are in the Lord. We dominate our environment. The power of God, the spirit of God is upon us. The joy of the Lord is in our heart. And because of that, we cannot keep silent. And I'm praying and believing that the grace of God, the power of God, we abide with you today in Jesus' name. Amen. For our pastor, I'm glad uh, that you gave me the opportunity to be part of this program. And I pray that as a result of this program, we will have true dominion in the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we are grateful. We thank you for another beautiful day that you are giving unto us. We are grateful for this program, Dominion. And we know that that's your will, that's your plan for us. And so, Lord, we thank you that the Dominion will not just be for us only, but we will extend it to others who are in captivity in Jesus' name. Lord, as we come into your word this morning, we pray that your spirit will minister to us. And that the power of the Holy Ghost will break every shackles in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. All the brethren who are online, either on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, on Zoom, or in whatever manner they are connecting, Lord, I just send the Spirit of the Lord forth to every one of them. That any area they need dominion, any area they need the touch of God right now, let it begin to happen in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the answer. Release your spirit unto us so that we can have perfect understanding of your word. Let there be no barrier between us, between the preacher and those who are listening. And let the spirit of the Lord breathe upon every one of us. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for this program that has been set up. And uh, I, love, I love the theme. Because when you talk about deliverance and dominion, uh, that's what God planned for us. And that's what we want everyone to have. And everyone listening to us online, or in whatever form you are listening to us, we trust God. He will give you dominion. Dominion in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Whatever the enemy has stolen, the Lord will recover back for you. The Lord will give you your freedom, freedom to enjoy the blessing of the Lord in Jesus' name. I see that yesterday we talked about this same uh, dominion, deliverance, and dominion over demonic affliction. But this morning, the topic before us is dominion, regaining the lost dominion through genuine repentance and salvation. Regaining the lost dominion. I think that's basically, that's even a shorter form of it. Uh, regaining the lost dominion. As you look through scripture and as you look at what uh, the plan and the purpose of God for man, even from the beginning, you're going to discover that dominion was not missing. In fact, that's the centrality of the plan of God for man from the beginning, from creation. The Bible tells us in the book of Genesis, let's begin to read Genesis chapter 1. As God began to create all that was on earth, God created man. 
And in verse 26 of the very first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Now, if you read that, the purpose and the plan of God is very clear there. It's like what he said in Jeremiah. He said, I know the thought that I think towards you. I know the, th the thought of God is revealed here to us in Genesis chapter 1 that we just read. God said, let us make man in our image. Now, God has dominion. He has dominion over all things. From the beginning of Genesis, you are going to discover that, that God was a God of dominion. He had dominion over the heavens and the earth. The Bible tells us in the beginning, in verse 1, God created the heaven and the earth. He had dominion over heaven and earth. And then we are told now in verse 26, God wants to make you and I in the likeness of God. He said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So the same image, the same dominion that God had, he wants you and I to have it. He doesn't want you to lose that dominion. He says, let's make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. It's all the way from the beginning. Let them have freedom. Let them have liberty. You know, let them have power, authority, to be able to do all things. Let them have authority. And God didn't just give us authority over just one thing. Look at it with me in that verse. It says, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air. So think about some words there. The sea, the air, the earth, and upon the earth. Look at it now again. He said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So you see that. It was very clear from beginning the plan and purpose of God for man when we were created. The appearance of the word dominion shows the intent of God. It shows the desire of God. This appearance of the word dominion, right from the beginning, it shows what God was planning. It shows exactly the desire of God for you and for me. Dominion. And that dominion, wherever it's been lost, the Lord Almighty will give it back to you and to me in Jesus' name. And so we see here very clearly, you know, God planned dominion. Right from the beginning. You can see it here. It says the sea, that's the aquatic. It talks about the air, that's the atmospheric. It talks about the, uh, on the earth, that's the land, the terrestrial. And then it gives us dominion over every sphere of life, every area. God gave man dominion. That's why even today, even though we have lost that dominion, we, you can still see that man dominates. But the dominion is not complete anymore because the enemy has come in. And that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. But it is the will of God that man will regain that dominion. And I pray in any area that our dominion has not been regained, the Lord Almighty will give us the grace to regain it in Jesus' name. So from this very beginning, we saw that God gave dominion. But there was something that happened, you know, as part of the dominion. As part of the dominion, the Lord said, if you go back to that Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. is repeated again to tell you that it was not an afterthought for God. He created man in his own image. And then he says, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, from that point, you are going to discover little by little that there were distinctions that God was making. There were distinctions among the animals, but now as you come among men, you know, God says, let us make man in our image. That was just generic. Let us make man. But now you see the distinction. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. And then now he says he created him male and female. He created them. Now it becomes plural. It's no longer a single uh, gender. It's now, you know, dual gender, male and the female. But look at what God did in verse 28. And God blessed them. 
Hallelujah. God bless them. How I pray this morning that that blessing of God will be abundant in your life in Jesus' name. God bless them. God bless them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. You see the authority that God gave man. And have dominion. That's the repetition of that word again. And have dominion over the fish. Look at it. Aquatic. Over the fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air. Atmospheric. He said you have Power over everything that is aquatic, over everything that is on the sea, everything in the on the atmosphere. He say you have power over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That's the land, the terrestrial. God again reaffirmed it, you know, by two immutable things that which we know that God cannot lie. He restated the authority of man once again, and God said, "Behold." I have given you every half-bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. God gave everything, all that man needed. You know, the Bible says God is able to give unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. So everything that we needed, God gave. All the necessary things that God gave. Even the beasts of the earth. And the fowl of the air, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. Amen. That's the authority of God. Whatever God says is established. And so that authority, that dominion was established in man. But something happened. Something happened to man, which is what is still happening today. The inability to take instruction. The inability to, to, to accept instruction. The inability of man to go by God's direction. That has always been the bane of man. Now, that happened as you come to chapter 3. You can see part of the dominion and the authority that God gave to man. You can see that you can read chapter 2 of Genesis. You will see all the activities of man. You see all that God did. But then, in chapter 3, now something happened. Something happened. Look at it there, chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, that, that is the area where man has the challenge. You see, it was very obvious here that God's instruction was very clear. God's instruction concerning the dominion of man was very clear. God said, I've given you dominion over everything, but there is just one thing I'm going to restrain you from. There is just one area I'm going to, you know, Take away the authority that you have. That one belongs to me. That's the area. That's the area of the authority of God. That's the area you are going to be different from God. So I'm going to restrain that from you. But unfortunately, the devil came in the form in the form of the serpent and told the woman, "Did God say?" You can see from that point, you know, the devil sowed doubts in the heart of the woman, and that's what the devil does today. It will sow doubts in the hearts of people. After they have had the instruction of God, after God has told them and given them an instruction that is very direct and clear, He is going to come and begin to disabuse their mind. Did God say that? Is that what God said? Are you sure God said that? And before you know it, man will begin to doubt. And the moment doubt comes in, the next thing that will come in will be what you are going to see now in the book of Genesis chapter 3. So, as we look at the message now, regaining the lost dominion through genuine repentance as salvation, we discover that the only way, the only way you and I will be able to regain the dominion that God gave us from the beginning is by returning to the original nature that God gave us. The nature of obedience, obeying God, coming to God, 
listening to God and doing exactly what God wants us to do. The moment we decide, we decide to do things in our own way, we see that that dominion will not be complete because God must have his way in our life, in our heart. And my prayer today to you, for you, and for everyone listening to us is that where we have lost dominion, the Lord Almighty will give it back to us as we obey him in Jesus' name. Very quickly, we are going to look at three things. Number one, the causes of man's forfeited dominion. Why did we lose the dominion? That's where we started reading now in chapter 3. We're going to read it again. What were the causes of man's forfeited? Why did man forfeit the dominion? Number two, what is the condition for man's full dominion? How can man regain that dominion? Because that's what we are talking about. That's Actually, that's the centrality of why we are together this morning. You know, it's about how we can regain full dominion. And it is the will of God that we should regain full dominion. God wants us to have full dominion. And I pray that full dominion will be ours in Jesus' name. And then we are going to look at continual fruitfulness and dominion. That is, when we receive the dominion, we regain the dominion. Now we are going to retain it. We are going to abide in the dominion. We are not going to allow the enemy to take it anymore. We are going to look at that. You know, that will be the last part of our discussion this morning. So we go back to that very first part that we started discussing. The reason, the causes of man's forfeited dominion. How did, did we forfeit this dominion? Again, in verse 26, Genesis 1, 26, it was the will of God. And God said, let's make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. That is the plan of God. There are many people who will tell you in the world, they say, well, man never had dominion. That's because they don't agree with the, with the record of the Bible. They are not in agreement with the plan and purpose of God. But as you read the book of Jeremiah, he says God has a plan. He has a plan for you and for me. A plan to give us dominion. A plan to give us a future. A plan to give us a hope. A plan to give us something magnificent, something significant. But we lost it. And that's what we're going to look at now. You know, generally, as you look at man, either in the beginning or now, there's no other reason why man will lose his dominion. Even in the physical, it's always attributed to one thing. Sin. It's basically that. And that's what you discover in Genesis chapter 3 that we read before. And we're going to go back there again. You see the dialogue between Eve, the first woman, and the serpent. That is the devil coming in the form of a serpent. The Bible says in verse 2, Genesis chapter 3, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The instruction was very clear. <clears throat> and from the recollection of Eve, the woman, it was clear that the instruction was very simple. <clears throat> it was understandable. It was not very comple uh, complex. God said, everything is yours except one thing. It's that simple. Break it down to that simple fact. Everything is yours. And it's the same thing today. As children of God, God is saying, all things are yours except one thing. And that one thing is sin. Disobedience to God, hardness of heart to God, all things are yours. And God said, you have all things to enjoy except sin, except disobedience. That is the reason why, why man lost dominion in the beginning. And that's why people are losing dominion today. God says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Man says, I'm not coming. You are not going to be able to receive that dominion. So God, just one thing you are lacking, that's obedience to God. One thing you are lacking, that's following the commandments of the Lord. One thing you are lacking, doing the will of God. That's just it. One thing, surrendering to God, obeying God, holding God up as the omnipotent. That's one thing that man is lacking today. And you discover every man that is out there 
You look at their lives and, and there's so much disarray, there's so much confusion, there's so much problem out there. The source of all those problems is basically disobedience as a result of sin, as a result of, you know, kicking against the command of the law, the instruction of the law. That's the only reason why we lose dominion. That's what happened to them in the beginning. And that's what is still happening today. And so the Bible says, the serpent now comes in. In verse 3. It says, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst, that's the woman now, of the garden. God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The instruction was very clear. But now look at what the serpent said. And the serpent said unto the woman. And the serpent is still saying to man and woman today, the woman and the seed of the woman, the serpent is still talking to them. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye, sh ye shall not surely die. It's like, I am very sure you can disobey God and nothing will happen to you. And that's what you hear people do today. You can disobey God and nothing will happen to you. That's the instruction people are getting outside there today. But let me tell you, the soul that sinned, it shall die. That's what the Bible says. If any soul sin against God, if any soul, if any individual go contrary to the will of God, it brings damnation. It brings destruction. That's what he brought to the people of old. That's what he's going to bring to people in our days. There's no difference. In the old, in the new, it's the same thing. So we need to listen to God, listen to the word of God. And by the grace of God, as we listen, we will regain our dominion. In the name of Jesus. Because here, what the enemy tried to do to, to Eve, the woman, was to say, you, you need to have dominion by yourself. No, there is nothing that a man has that is not given to him from heaven. Our life, our existence, our being. Bible said, thou art worthy, O Lord. You are worthy. He said, these people have I created for myself. They shall show forth my praise. The essence of our creation is to praise God, is to glorify God. And there is no way that man can glorify God in disobedience. There is no way man can glorify God in going contrary to the will of God. There is no parent who is happy that their children are going contrary to them. That their children are going the way of disobedience. And they say, I love it. The same thing with our heavenly parent, our heavenly father. He is unhappy every time we go contrary to his will. And that's what happened to Eve here. And unfortunately, Eve got that bug, that is, the bug of sin. And then he extended, she extended it to the husband, Adam. And unfortunately, that's how all of this spread to all of us who are, uh, who are children, who are created after the image of Adam and Eve. And so we see here, the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, verse 5. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That portion is very, very important. Let me read it again, that verse 5. He said, God does know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You know, the devil knows how to take a little, uh, 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 the truth, the truth and take, you know, and wrap it up. I mean, the untruth and wrap it up in some truth. Because here, there are some truth in what he said. <clears throat> there are things God has reserved for you and I to enjoy. There are things God has reserved. There are greater things, greater plan that God has for you and I. That the enemy knew. And he was trying to use a corny way to say, God is keeping something away from you. And you don't have to depend on God to get it. You can just get it yourself by disobeying God. How, how foolish can that be? That you think you can get anything on earth by going contrary to the will of God. And people still do it today. It's not just in the life of Eve or Adam. It's still in the life of people today. People think there are things they can get. There are certain things in life they can get, and they can get it outside of God. Listen, everything we get outside of God will not endear us to God. We must get everything in accordance to the will of God. Because God has a plan for each and every one of us. And where he wants us to get to, he has that plan. And we will get there if we agree with the plan of God. But the devil wants us to run ahead of God. 
He wants us to disobey God and do things our own way. My prayer is that you and I, we will not do things our own way in Jesus' name. And so we see very clearly here that as a result of Eve listening, that is the woman Eve, listening to the serpent, things went wrong. He says, he, he, look at that verse 5 again. I'd like to read it. For God does know that in the day ye eat there, he said, from the moment you disobey God. That's what he was saying. But he didn't say disobey God. You see, that's what the devil always do. He will not say, go ahead and disobey God. No, he will not say you are disobeying God. He will just say, why can't you just be free? Why can't you just do things your own way? Why can't you just do this or do that? In essence, if you read through, you know, through the lines, what he's saying is, go your own way, disobey God, and let God contradict you. How can God be against you and you are able to make it? It's impossible. But in essence, that's what the devil is saying. He said, disobey God. Go contrary to God. And then everything will be all right. It's impossible. So, you know, he will, he will say, you know, a, a, a bunch of, uh, uh, of untruth. He will wrap it up with something that looks fanciful. Because man has his own will. Man will say, well, also I want to be free. Why can't I be free? You know, that's the aspect that, that, that appeals to man. Why can't I be free? What if I just do it my way? I'll be okay. No. Our lives are given to us by God. And God is the one who can pattern it the way he wants. For every man on earth, God has a plan. He has a purpose. He has, you know, and that purpose is a very good one. Maybe we need to look at that because I keep referring to that every time. And, uh, you know, it's very important. Jeremiah chapter 29. Let me read it because it's very important for you to know. Because through the prophets, we, are, we now discover, we know that God has a plan. Of course, as you read in the book of Genesis, you know that God has a plan here. Yeah? The plan of God is very clear. God says, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to increase. I want you to have dominion. I want you to have the best. That's the plan of God. But Jeremiah stated it again. Jeremiah 29 Verse 11, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That's God. That's God for you. God has a plan. God has a purpose. And we must allow the plan and purpose of God to be fulfilled. But we always like to run ahead of God. And that's the reason why man... He's in pain, he's in trouble, he's in, he's in difficulty today. You know, you look at even in the beginning, God, the Bible says God created man male and female. It's very clear there. But man says, no, we don't want that. We don't want male and female. If God created me a man, I don't like what God created. If God made me a man, I don't like to be a man. I want to be a woman. And then the one that God created a woman will say, oh, I don't want to be a woman. I want to be a man. Man is always looking for a way to go contrary to the will of God. That's where we lose dominion. <laughs> you know, some days ago I was, uh, I was looking at, uh, I, 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 I chanced upon a program where somebody who has been trying, trying to change their whatever it is from one thing to the other. And finally you look at the person after so much surgery. You cannot recognize them. You know, they look like a doll. They look horrible. That's not the purpose of God. And they are in sickness. They are in affliction. Yet they are not turning God. Man will always lose at the end if we don't follow God. The only way we can be a winner is to follow the plan and purpose of God for humanity. And my prayer today is you and I we will continue to follow the plan and purpose of God for us in Jesus' name. So he says, I know the plan. I know the thought that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thought of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. And then in verse 12, he says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Here is the recipe for success, for dominion, for regaining the dominion. That when you and I recognize that we have lost it, and then we can turn around and call on God. God says he will hear us. Maybe we have the opportunity to read that passage again. But let's go, you know, to this point. Number one, now the causes of man's forfeited dominion. So you see here, disobedience is the origin of all sin in man. Sin brought man under 
brought everyone under. All sinners are brought under by sin. They are brought under. They are destroyed. They are diminished. Sin, it robs me, it robs man of all that God gave him. Look at the dominion. Look at the blessing that God pronounced. Sin robbed man of all of it as a result of the disobedience. And then you can see that sin begets all other kind of perverted way of life. You know, as you now follow from Genesis chapter 3, you keep on going. You see the disobedience against God. You are going to discover that on and on, on and on, man began to become a generation of sinners, 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 on and on. You come to, you come to chapter 6 of Genesis and it came to pass where men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men and they were fair and they took them wise. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is fled. You know, yet his day shall be 120. You know, from that point, before that time, people were living 900, 800, 700, 600. But suddenly God said, I can't leave these people here, living this many, 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 many years in disobedience, contrary to my will. So God limited the age of man to 120. That's still even a long year, but man did not learn from there. You come to chapter 11. Concerning the Tower of Babel, you see, disobedience. It never stopped. It's just one disobedience after another. One disobedience after another. So, as we come back to that chapter 3, let's end our, uh, our, our thing there, and then we're going to uh, talk about some of the other causes that came as a result of that initial disobedience. On and on, you see, one disobedience begets another. One sin begets another. And so, in verse 6 of that chapter 3, Genesis 3, says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant. It wasn't that the woman saw it. It was that she was persuaded. She was persuaded. Now, in her own eyes, she said, Oh, I think, I think I'm going to follow Satan. I think I'm going to listen to Satan, a uh, serpent, in whatever the serpent is saying. I think what serpent, what serpent is saying seems to make sense that I'm going to live, I'm going to be okay, I'm going to have everything, I'm not going to be under anyone, no authority, no rule over me. Let me go ahead. So, that's what she came to her own carnal realization, which is the problem today. Man comes to a carnal realization and wants to do things the wrong way. When the woman saw and realized that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wife, she took of the fruit thereof and did it. That's the beginning of trouble. And gave also unto her husband with her. And he did it. Look at part of what the Satan said, what the serpent said, begin to come. You see, the moment you, you, you commit sin, I'm telling you, your eyes will open to some degree of evil. That's the aspect that the devil didn't tell you. Your eyes will open to some degree of evil. Look at it. The Bible says, and the eyes of them both, verse 7, were opened, and they knew. You see that? There was some truth around what the devil was saying, but... He was wrapping them in a whole lot of falsehood. Look at it there. The eyes of them both were, up to this point, they were ignorant. They were innocent. But now, from this point, innocence was lost. Ignorance was lost. Listen, God wants us to be innocent of sin. God wants to be ignorant of sin. That's why you see children who are born in a home where they're Christian home. You know, sometimes it can be very dangerous when they leave uh, their home and they go to school. And then suddenly they begin to see things they have not seen before. They felt like maybe I should do it. And then this, the serpent will come like they came to, to Eve and say, ah, don't worry. Just go ahead. It's a good thing to do. It's a wonderful thing to do. It's not going to cause you any problem. And you discover that they are more injured and they are more damaged than those that are already children of the devil. They are more damaged because they were ignorant. They are innocent. But now the devil opens their eyes to evil. If by any means they accept it, then destruction comes. My prayer is that for all our children, our young people, the enemy will not be able to destroy them in Jesus' name. Amen. And the eyes of both of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Look at it. That's the problem. And then they sow fig leaves together and make themselves apron. You know, you look at how people dress today. You know that this is where it came from. How can you sew fig leaves? How can fig leaves cover you? It cannot cover you. It cannot cover you. So that's why God himself had to now, later on, cover them, you know, by himself. And that's what God is still doing today, that after we have made ourselves naked, God is still merciful. He's trying to cover us. So, causes of man's 
forfeited dominion. Let's wrap that area up. I, I think you understand it now. Man was meant to reign over sin, over sickness, over Satan. But this disobedience caused them, caused man, the first man, the first woman, to lose all that God has gained. Man generally know that there is a problem, but unfortunately, you know, right away they knew there was a problem because now they were able to know things they didn't know before. And suddenly they realized, oh, we are in trouble, but it was too late. And that's, you know, it's like a little child, he took a knife, a very sharp knife, and he's playing with it. And suddenly the knife caught the, the, the child in the hand and the, man, the, 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 the child threw the knife away. Well, it's too late, son. The knife has caught your hand. What are you going to do now? Are you going to keep taking the knife and play with it or you are going to find a way, uh, a cure to the wound that you have caused? That's where we are now. The knife has caught all of us, has caught our parents, Adam and Eve. And now the wound has been trans <clears throat> transmitted and transferred, translated to every one of us. And now the need is for us to find a way to find cure. And that's where repentance comes in. That's where salvation in Christ comes in, which we're going to discuss very soon. But you discover here, as a result of this problem that has opened our eyes up, man is now seeking every other means to solve the problem. But there is no other way you can solve this problem. You see, they want to solve the problem by, by sowing fig leaves. That's not going to be. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Fig leaves are not going to, you know, solve the problem of nakedness. It is only turning to God and allowing God, you know, to cover us, to cover our nakedness. That's the only way that we are going to be covered. It's only when the blood of Jesus covers us. That's the only way that we are going to be truly covered. People try all sorts of things, you know, all sorts of um, methods, fake methods. To cover. And the Bible says, He that covereth his sin cannot prosper. You cannot prosper. When you are committed sin, when you are in sin, the only solution is turning back to God. There's no other way. In repentance and say, God, I'm sorry. So we see here the, the, the reason why we lose dominion. Let me just summarize quickly as we round up this portion. Number one is sin as a result of disobedience. And then number two, we see the instrumentality of Satan coming in. That Genesis 3, 1 to 5. Like I said, Proverbs 28, 13 says, if you cover your sin, you will not prosper. Now man learned to cover sin. And then unbelief came in. Doubts came in. You know, pessimistic thoughts and confessions came in. When man has lost the original nature, all kinds of evil begin to flood in, begin to complicate the situation. Now we begin to walk by side. You know, all kinds of causes begin to come in as a result of disobedience. Then slothfulness begins to come in. Ignorance comes in. We think now we have knowledge, but really, we don't have the real knowledge. The truth now is closed against us. Our eyes are now open to lies, to disobedience. You know, in the beginning, truth was made plain, and man accepted it, and man bought it full and free. And they were roaming freely. They were going all around. They had no consciousness of anything. But the moment sin came in, man learned that he is now naked. And because of the nakedness now, man is now hiding. Now we hide from God. Now we hide from everyone. We don't. We know everything we are doing now, we are hiding. That's the consequence of sin. Fear comes in. Fear, and unfortunately, it's not even the fear of man. Because the Bible says the fear of, of, of uh, it says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It's not the fear of God that we have. It's the fear of man. Is the fear of uh, consequences. Is fear of this and that. The real fear that is going to help us, we don't have it, which is the fear of God. And that's what we need to gain. They feared God in the beginning. They didn't go to sin. But now, when we lose that nature, now people don't fear God, but now they are fearing man. They are afraid of man. They are afraid of wishes. They are afraid of wizard. They are afraid of spirit. They are afraid of this. The things man was never afraid of, now we are afraid of it. The real person we need to be afraid of, God, the creator, the one who made us, who gave us purpose in life. We are not afraid of that. That's the nature we need to, we need to regain. And then pride, pride comes in as a result of that. But now the question is, point number two, the second aspect of our message, what is the condition 
for our dominion. It is very simple. Repent. Turn back to God. Return to God. Sin brings ruins. Sin brings destruction. There is no other way that man can win. Now, all through the history of man, time will fail us to read. From the time of Adam, the time of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, all the way to Moses, to the wilderness, Pharaoh's time, wilderness time, you know, the time of the Moabites, the Ammonites in the wilderness, and then out to the promised land, and then we got to Canaan, all of that. Look at the life of men. It's all a bundle of contradiction and going contrary to the will of God. But the only way that we can come, we can come back to the true dominion that God gave us is by coming back in repentance to God. Let me read a couple of passages. Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 15. Mark chapter 1. I'm reading verse 15. And saying, the time is fulfilled. I'm saying to you now, my brothers and sisters, listening to me, your time is now. It is fulfilled. The time is now. The kingdom of God is at hand. What do you need to do? Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now, that's loaded. That verse is very, very loaded. What does that mean? It's basically saying, it is time to turn away from the wrongs we have been doing and turn to God. Repent ye. You see, John was telling, he was telling Israel at this time. And he was making some allusion and preaching and telling people about the necessity of repentance. And as you go to other parts of scripture, you are going to discover that it was explained a little bit. He says, the time is not, there is no time to waste. I don't have time to waste. You don't have time to waste. It is time. You cannot be saying tomorrow. No, it is time. There is no time to waste because tomorrow is not guaranteed. This is the time to turn back to God. This is the time to repent. Repentance just simply means turning away from the wrong way and turning to the right way. Right way. He says, look at how he put it. He says, repent ye and believe the gospel. Turn away from your evil way. Believe the gospel. What is the gospel? Now, let's go and explain that in chapter 3 of the book of John. Chapter 3, John chapter 3, the gospel. Here is what the gospel. He said, believe the gospel. I don't want to just say it with my mouth. I want the scripture to help you to understand what it is. John chapter 3. Verse 16, he says, For God so loved the world. That is the gospel. God so loved the world is the gospel. The love of God. That even from beginning, the love of God made him to create us in his image. The love of God makes him to say, I still have a plan. The love of God makes him to find a way for you and I to escape the consequence and the damnation of our sins. And so the scripture says, in that verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave, you see, God is always a giver. He gave his only begotten son, that's Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him. Now it says, go back to that mark that I read. He says, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, turn away, and believe the gospel. So what are you believing? What are you believing in? Here is what you believe in. In that verse 16. He that, be, he, he says, in verse 16, he says, his only, He gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, that's the one you believe in. Whoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see the, the, the destruction and the damnation that sin brought, the only way to escape it is what John chapter 3 verse 16 is talking about. Whosoever believe in him, it should not perish. In verse 15, 
of that John chapter 3, he says, That whosoever believeth in him, that's Jesus, should not perish but have eternal life. And then he repeats this again. For God so loved the world. The love of God from the beginning, from the time of dominion, is still there. And God is saying, I retain that love. I am God. I change not. I have not changed. If you only, you are the one who changed. You change your heart. You change your mind. You change, you know, the dominion that I gave to you, but I'm willing to give it back to you. All you need to do is to turn around and believe in the only provision that I have given to restore dominion unto you. You cannot have dominion. <coughs> Pardon me. You cannot have dominion until you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's what the passage is saying. You cannot have dominion. Dominion is only possible when you believe and turn back and believe in the only provision that God has given for our dominion, for our redemption. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You see that? The coming of Jesus Christ to the world, the Son of God, was basically to bring us to the point where we lost it at the Garden of Eden, that we can have every man now, every man individually who is born to the world now, you know, individually we came with the image of Adam and Eve. But God says you can change that image. You can now turn it by believing in Jesus Christ. The new image is given unto you. A new life is given unto you. A new identity is given unto you. You now have your identity in Christ Jesus. That is what he's telling us. And my prayer is that as many as are yet to accept Christ... I pray that we accept today in Jesus' name. He said, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now look at verse 18. He that believeth on him, that's Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. God says, just like the beginning, I gave you an instruction. Adam and Eve refused to believe it, and they were condemned. So today, the instruction is, I've made another way for your dominion. I've made another way for you to get to heaven. And the, that only way is the way that you are going to believe in. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Because it is appointed unto man once to be alive and once to die. And after that, there will be judgment. And God says, after you have lived, I've given you a chance to come to life. But after that, there is a life after that. That life after that is only possible by making a change. By turning around. By looking unto Jesus and allowing him to be your Lord and your Savior. That's what God is telling you and I today. That's what the word of God is saying today. That there is a way out. <clears throat> the dominion that God has given remains there. God says you can pick it back. Eternal life. Living with me. Being part of the agenda of God. God says that's still possible. But you have to receive that newness of life that comes only through Jesus Christ. He is my only begotten son. He's the only one that has the authority to turn things around for any man. And so today God is giving us that opportunity that whatever we have lost, and even for us who are believers, who are children of God, there was a time we had the message, we came into the message, we are following God, but little by little, like Adam and Eve, the devil is suggesting, do it this way, do it that way, and we are moving farther away to God and we are closer to God. And God says, no. You need to repent also. Turn around and begin to follow this narrow way. This way that leads to heaven. You know, Christ Jesus already said, I am the way. Start following me. Following me. Following my, my example. Following my life. And that's the only way that you can have this dominion 
and receive it back. And my prayer is today, the Lord will give us grace to be able to receive that in Jesus' name. In Acts chapter 20, this message of dominion and repentance is preached over and over and over in Acts. Chapter 20, Paul Apostle repeated this same message of repentance, that what we need to do is to repent, repent of our past way of doing things, repent of our sinfulness, and turn to God. Acts chapter 20, I read from verse 20, it says, And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I showed you, and have taught you publicly from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and to the Greeks. This is not something just for some section. You know, some people will say, well, that gospel of repentance is only for uh, Asians. It's for Africans. It's for only for this sect. It's only for this denomination. It's only No, it's for all men, for the Greeks, for the Jews, for the Gentiles, everyone. Everyone who is desirous of going to heaven. He said, Paul said, I kept back nothing from you. He said, I'm testifying both to the Jews and to the Greeks. That repentance should be made towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Have faith in Jesus. Have faith in the work of Christ. The fact that Jesus went to the cross. Bible says God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. He gave Jesus Christ to die on the, on the cross for all. Why did he have to die? Because God is a God of judgment and justice. And because of the judgment and justice of God, the soul, if a soul die, you know, if a soul sin, he must die. There must be a sacrifice for that sin. And Jesus fulfilled that sacrifice for the sins of the world. He gave himself for the sins of the world. That's why God has, has given him as a propitiation, as an exchange, as a sacrifice, as an offering for the sin of the world. And now all that look towards Jesus Christ, they can be saved. And that's what God is talking about today. That the dominion that man had from beginning, to regain that dominion, not just here on earth, but to have dominion in the world after. That is when we die and we cross to the other side. That we will have dominion. We'll be able to stay with God in heaven. In John chapter uh, 14, Jesus Christ said something that is very important because we know that everyone is going to die. Every man will die, but when we die, that we are going to be able to live with him. In John chapter 14, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. This is Jesus talking. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. This is Jesus when he was on earth. But now he's saying, I'm going to die. I will die for the sins of the world. And I'll go and prepare a place. So for you to have that place that is going to prepare, you have dominion here on earth, you have dominion in heaven. That's why believing in Jesus is very important. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Jesus Christ is coming again. That is the important factor now. He is coming back again. And when he comes back, that you and I may be qualified to go with for him. That's why this repentance is necessary. That's why accepting Jesus is necessary. And he says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. That's the plan of everyone. Everybody wants to get to heaven. But he says the only way you get to heaven is through repentance. It's only going through the gate of repentance, turning away from your sinful path. Uh, path and coming to the path of righteousness through the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. He said, when you repent and you turn to Christ, then you are going to discover that that dominion will be restored, not just here on earth, but even in eternity. And I pray that the Lord will give us the grace to do that in Jesus' name. So, we repent of our sin, we turn to Jesus, and how do we do that? First of all is the acknowledgement of sin. Acknowledging the fact that what Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Many people are going around today saying, I'm not a sinner. I'm not a sinner. No, all, all men are sinners. So there is nobody who is exempted. All have sinned, the Bible says, and come short of the glory of God. What do we do now, now that we have that knowledge? Well, what we do is we repent. We turn to the Lord. You know, we turn to him totally. Let me read 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Let me read it to you. We repent and turn to God. Hallelujah. 
We repent and turn to God. That's what we need to do. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Paul Apostle was talking to some believers here. He says, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, let me read. Verse 10 is where I'm actually going, but I want to give some context. He says, for though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I perceive that the same peace who has made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Some wrong things were going on in, in Corinth. And Apostle Paul wrote to them and chastised them. And many of them didn't, you know, they, it was like they were sorrowful. But Paul said, that's not the kind of, it's not the kind of sorrow that doesn't bring repentance. It's not the kind of sorrow that you have and you just shake it off. And then you, it didn't make you to act in any way. He said, you need to act. But Paul now say, he says, he made you sorry, though it were but for a season. He says, but now I rejoice. Not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrow to repentance. That's what I'm saying. You know, you hear the word I'm saying now. It pricks your heart to the point that you, you want to repent. That's what Paul was saying. You sorrow unto repentance, to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world walketh death. Hallelujah. That's what he's saying. He says, this sorrow that you have, it makes you to repent. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Now verse 10. For godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world walketh death. So he's saying, when you have a godly sorrow, it will make you repent unto salvation. It will turn you away from wrong, wrong path to the good path, and you will start following God. You will love to follow God. That's what I'm talking about now. That we feel the weight of our wrong, and then we are willing to turn to God. We are willing to do the will of God. And as we make that determination, we acknowledge our, our, our sin, we repent of it. Then we believe in Jesus Christ. We turn to Christ for the remission, for the forgiveness of our sin. We confess those sins. And then we commit to following him. We give ourselves totally, completely to Christ. And then we are ready to do his will. Praise the Lord. That's the, that's the path that God is looking for. And I pray as many as are hearing me. Or as, as many as we hear this message at whatever time. God will give you grace to understand. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The only way to eternal life is Jesus Christ. Is the only begotten Son of God. And you will turn to Him in repentance, in godly sorrow that brings repentance and salvation. And then you will accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. What that means is you are saved. Amen. What that means is that your sins are forgiven. Amen. What that means is that mercy and grace of God is now available for you. Amen. And by the grace of God, that mercy is available even today in Jesus' name. And the moment that is possible and you do it, then the Bible says from that point, you become a saint. You become a child of God. Your sins are forgiven. As a result of your confession and accepting Christ and committing to following him, then there are a few other things you need to do. Now you begin to live above sin. Because the power now is given to you to live above sin. In John chapter 8, you know, there was the example of a woman there. John chapter 8, verse 11 is where I'm going to. John chapter 8, in verse 11. But I, I will give it a context in verse 10. When Jesus has littered off himself and saw none but the woman, that's the woman caught in adultery. He said unto her, woman, where are those thy accusers? Has no man condemned thee? Because the moment you turn to Jesus and you have discussion with Jesus and you turn to him and you give everything to him, you see, condemnation is removed. Because people came here to condemn this woman. But, praise God, Jesus was available. It's a very, it's a very um, wonderful atmosphere to look at. When people are coming to condemn a woman, to kill her, to destroy her, and to do everything to her, because of the presence of Christ. Because of the availability of Christ. Because of what Christ, you know, carries. Because of the grace that is in Christ. They couldn't do it. Same thing. The moment you turn to Christ, the grace in Christ covers your sin. As you repent and turn to him. And then heaven, in heaven you have a new name. 
So now Jesus said, Woman, where are those that accuse us? Has no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. She called him Lord. You see, there's no one that disagrees with God that call, that call, you know, that will call Jesus Lord. When you call Jesus Lord, it means you are saying, you are my Lord. The woman accepted that Jesus is Lord. He says, no man, Lord. You too accept Jesus as Lord. No man, Lord. Because she called him Lord. Jesus now said, neither do I condemn thee, but go and sin no more. Amen. Go and sin no more. From that point, a new life. A new life. And if you are online and you are listening to this message, if you have made, if you have made that decision, acknowledging sin, repenting of sin, believing in Christ, you are confessing those sins, and you are committing to following Jesus Christ to the end as your Lord and Savior, the Word of God is saying, go and sin no more. Amen. And the Bible says from this point now, as a new baby in the Lord, now you commit yourself to the things of God. Let me, let me show that to you in 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Now, what that means is that you have become a new baby in Christ and you need to be fed. In 1 Peter chapter 2, he says, as new babes, in verse 2, desire the sincere milk of the world that ye may grow thereby. Now God wants you to grow in your dominion. Freedom has been given to you. Freedom from sin. Freedom from perdition. Freedom from destruction. Freedom from condemnation has been given to you now as a new baby in Christ. He said, now you desire the word of God. Now you must be thirsty. You want to drink the milk of God's word. You want to be in fellowship. So now, few things you need to do very quickly. Number one, you are living above sin. Number two, you are, you are desiring the word of God. Number two, you are dwelling in the word of God. Number three, you are rejecting the world, the things of the world, the evil things, the suggestions of the world. You are rejecting it. And then you are only accepting Christ. Because the Bible says it is only when we do that at our faith we overcome the world. First John 5 verse 4. Then you are abiding in the fellowship of God's people. You don't remain outside there. Like the woman in that, uh, in that passage that we just read now, John chapter 8. From that point, that woman turned around and began to follow Jesus Christ. So you and I, by the grace of God, as new babies now, now you are rejecting the world, you are accepting Christ, you are abiding in the fellowship. And all those false prophets... False brethren that you have been, you know, you have out there that you have been listening to, you reject them now. And now the truth becomes your watchword. Because as you abide in that fellowship, iron will begin to sharpen you, begin to sharpen you, begin to sharpen you so that you become stronger and stronger. And then fervency in prayer. Where you are hearing, you know, the people of God pray, you are there. Where you are hearing the word of God being preached, you are there. Everything. And then you begin to practice self-examination. Examine yourself every day, as uh, Second Corinthians 13, verse uh, number 5 rightly said. And then by the grace of God, you move on in the things of the law. That is the blessing of repentance. When you repent and turn to God, new things. Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. All things become new. Now, that brings us to the last part of our discussion this morning. Continual fruitfulness and dominion. Continual fruitfulness. Now from this point, you don't want to turn back. You want to continue to move on in the things of the world or of the Lord. You know, the, the dominion that you have gained, you don't want to lose it. I'm just going to read one passage and then we will pray. Second Peter is where I want to read. Second Peter in chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read to us from verse 2. It says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Pardon me, that's First Peter. I'm looking for Second Peter chapter 1. He says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. You see that? From this point now, grace and peace will be multiplied unto you as a new baby, as a new child in Christ. Grace and peace. You suddenly have peace that you've never had before. And then grace of God is given unto you. It will help you to grow. It will help you to, to become solid in Christ and in God. And then he says in verse 3, according as his divine power, 
has given unto us all things. All things are given to you now. Now a new life has begun. All things are given unto you. All things that pertain to life and godliness. How did you get it? Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Your new knowledge of Jesus Christ now has brought you a new blessing. A new grace. He said, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Now the promise of God from the beginning, the promise of dominion, the promise of power, the promise of conquering, the promise of elevation, the promise of living, you know, same free. That promise now is available and you can tap into it from this moment on. You can live in dominion. You can dominate your environment. You can have dominion over sin, over sickness, over the power of the devil. Now that dominion is given unto us. Say, whereby are given unto us beyond what you can understand. That has been given unto you now. God has given greater things to you now beyond what you can even understand. He said, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature. You see now, the divine nature, now you can partake of it. You can partake of the peace of God. You can partake of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, you know, long-suffering, you know, all of that, perseverance. You can now enjoy the blessing, the fullness of what God gives. Look at it. It says, ye are now partakers of the divine nature. Haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through love. The corrupting power of the world, now you have escaped it as a result of your salvation. Now you can continue in newness of life. But now it says, don't stop there. It's a great thing that you have come to the Lord now. Don't stop there. Now it says, and beside this, beside all that you have just received, now it says, now you give yourself. It's like you are planting things. It's like you are planting new seeds in your life. It says, beside this, giving all diligence add to your faith. The faith that gave you salvation, add to it now. Add virtue, add, add virtue to it. And to that virtue, add knowledge. Now, the knowledge of Jesus, the knowledge of the word of God, you add to it. And to knowledge, you add temperance. The word of God will be tempering you. The knowledge of the word of God will be tempering you. And to that temperance, you are patience. When you are temper, when the Lord can temper your spirit, then you are patient. Now you can wait for God. You are no longer in hurry in any area. And then godliness will come in. He said, one thing after another. God will begin one building block after another. The Lord will begin to build it on you. He said, and to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly, you see, the moment that your life is set, then you are able to relay with others. You are able to reach out to others. You are able to do great things with others. And then he says, to brotherly kindness, charity, which is the perfection of all things. Now the love of God, now the grace of God, now the power of God, now the goodness of God, everything surrounding you will now flow through you. And then he says in verse 8, For if these things be in you, and they will be in you, they shall be in you. The Lord will make sure that all of these things, He will keep you with them in Jesus' name. He said, if this thing be in you and abound, they make you that you are neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, but listen, for those who reject that part, here is what happened. He that lacked these things, they are blind, they cannot see or afar, and they are forgotten that they are even purged from their old sins. So that's the reason why you see those who have been children of God before, when they don't take on this garment, they become barren. I pray you will not be barren. I pray none of us will be barren, but we will be fruitful in the Lord in Jesus' name. But when we have all of this, in verse 11, he says, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly unto the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at that. An entrance will be ministered unto you. You have an entrance to the abundance of the things of heaven. You continually become fruitful. In the Lord. And then the promises of God becomes yea and amen in your life. So now, number one, you have physical, your physical supplies. God supplies all your needs according to his riches in glory. Physical supplies. You have all of that. Number two, unlimited blessings begin to come in as a result of you accepting Christ and coming to him. It begins to bless you. Also, persecution will come in. Because that's part of it. Yea, he that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But then when you call upon God, answers will come to your prayer. There will be answer to your prayer. Because 
If you remember that passage that I read, Jeremiah 29, he said, I know the thought that I think towards you. God says, my thought to you. You know, is the thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He said, then ye shall call upon me, verse number 12, then ye shall call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Now, when you pray, you get answer to your prayer, because God now promised to answer your prayer. And then God removes obstacles that are in your way. He removes obstacles. And then he gives you divine enablement, divine empowerment. He empowers you. And then eternal life, as I said before. And then there is spiritual light. That is the light of God, you know, shining through you. The Bible says, a house that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. You become a house that is set upon a hill. You are shining as light, and then you have power to serve God. Hallelujah. You have power. You move from just being a babe now, you become a mature person, and now you are able through you also. Others can receive salvation. Others can receive the knowledge of the goodness of God. And then, that dominion that we have from the beginning now is restored fully unto us. And my prayer is that in every area we have lost dominion, the Lord will restore you fully unto us in Jesus' name. And so we have, we have talked about uh, this topic today, regaining the lost dominion. Through genuine repentance, you genuinely repent, and then you receive salvation in Christ. And all that you have lost in Christ, He will give unto you once again in Jesus' name. Fruitfulness, joyfulness in the Lord, eternal life will be yours in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, I believe if you are online to, uh, this morning and you are yet to have this dominion that God gives, what a wonderful time for you to turn around and surrender yourself and give yourself to this great provision of God for you and for humanity. And I pray that as you do that, the blessings that follow, the Lord will give you in Jesus' name. We are going to go to the Lord in prayer. We are going to thank God for the provisions that he has made. The provision of dominion for man, for you and for me. Let's go before the Lord and say, Father, we thank you for the initial provision you made. Provision of dominion for all men. Thank you, Father, that even when we lost it, you made a way. You made a way for us. You made a way for us. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we glorify you. Maybe you have lost that dominion and you are yet to regain it. What a, what a wonderful time for you to turn back to Christ and regain that dominion again. Even now, today, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you can call upon God, even today, that dominion, that dominion, the Lord will give you. The Lord will give you. Don't be shy. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I'm sorry for all the lives I've lived, contrary to your will, just like Adam and Eve. But I thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. And I pray now, Lord, that the grace that came through Jesus Christ you will bestow upon me. Lord, I'm sorry for all my sinfulness. And then you confess all those sins. And then you turn back to God. And as you turn back to Him, and you ask for newness of light, new light from heaven, that God will empower you to live for Him henceforth, He will give you that grace. He will restore your dominion. And from now, you have dominion over sin. When the devil now entices you, you'll be able to say no. When the world entices you, you say no. When the enemy entices you, you will say no. That dominion will be restored. And from that dominion, you have now have spiritual dominion. Dominion in the word of God. Dominion in the things of God. Dominion over the world. Dominion over sickness. Dominion over satanic activities. God will restore all those dominions. As he said in the beginning, he says, let them have dominion over all things. Terrestrial dominion. Dominion over the sea. Aquatic dominion. Dominion, atmospheric dominion, dominion in the air, dominion everywhere. That dominion will be restored unto you in the name of Jesus. So open your mouth and tell God, Father, I thank you because of what you have done. 
I'm asking now that that dominion that I have lost, you will restore unto me, and the Lord will give it to you. If you are a child of God before, and somewhere along the way you have missed it, you can regain your dominion again too. All you need to do is just turn back to God. Repent of your sins also. Repent of your wayward ways. And turn back to God. And your dominion will be restored in Jesus' name. As many as are online that want to do that, let's pray together. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your word that I've heard. And now I come to you, Holy Father. Asking, O oh Lord, Father, that you forgive me. Of all my sinful ways. Lord, I repent of all of them. I confess all of them to you. And I'm asking, O oh Lord, Father, that from now on, the grace to live in newness of life you will give unto me. The strength to overcome sin you will impart into my life. From this moment, Lord, Lord Jesus, I come to you, accept you as Lord and Savior, and I come into that power of Christ anew and afresh. That the dominion as of old. Oh Lord Father, the dominion that Jesus brought. Lord, I receive once more again. In the name of Jesus. And I believe from now on, I will live in newness of life. Thank you Father for, for your forgiveness. I give you all the praise. For in Jesus name we are praying. Amen. Father, we want to bless you this morning. Thank you for your word that your people have received. We bless you and glorify you as many as are making confession of their sins. We ask, Holy Father, you will accept them. You will receive them in Jesus' name. Father, forgive them. Oh, Lord, Father, bring them close to yourself. Wash them and cleanse them. Give them newness of life. And Father, restore their dominion so that from now, sin shall not have dominion over them. Oh, Lord, sickness will not have dominion. Satan will not have dominion over their lives in Jesus' name. And the original dominion that you gave unto every one of us, Father, let them receive anew and afresh in the name of Jesus. And even greater grace that Jesus brought, I pray you will give unto them in Jesus' name. From now on, Father, I pray they will walk in the power and the strength and the grace of God. And they will walk in the newness of Christ in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. Lord, I pray for everyone who may be sick as a result of the dominion of Satan and sickness. I pray, oh Lord, Father, taking authority over that sickness, even right now. I command them to come out in Jesus' name. Every area challenges in the life of your children, I command right now, Holy Father, you will destroy all the dominion of the enemy in their life in Jesus' name. And I pray from now they'll be able to live for you. They'll be able to work for you and serve you, O oh Lord, in newness of life in Jesus' name. Father, I pray dominion in your word, dominion by your spirit, give unto them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. For the rest of the program today, I pray, Father, all our leaders who are going to still minister to us, I pray you will empower them and strengthen them so that, Lord, we continue to receive the goodness of the Lord, even through this dominion program in Jesus' name. At the end of it, there will be dominion for every man. There will be dominion for every woman. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you and glorify you for our church in Missouri. Father, we pray dominion you will give unto us beginning with our pastor and everyone that is working with him there father i pray dominion oh lord father you will give unto them in jesus name dominion over every spirit every power that want to hinder the gospel in that oh lord region i pray father you will grant them dominion over them in jesus name your word say we walk over serpent and scorpion and every power of the enemy lord i pray for our leaders over there they will walk over serpent and scorpion in Jesus' name. You grant them breakthrough in ministry. Father, Lord, the power, O oh Lord, that comes through salvation. Father, people will come to their ministry to receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. Bless all your people today. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Over to you.